joined by Hofstra head men's soccer coach Richard Nuttall following a 4-0 victory over Lafayette tonight. Coach, congratulations on the win. Thank you. Uh, you know, the streak, the unbeaten streak continues. What did you see from your team tonight? Uh, very professional. Did what we had to do. It was tough. Lafayette, you know, played five at the back. Um, and it was hard to break them down initially, but we did have a few chances early. But, you know, we just changed a couple of things, got the full backs a little bit higher, got some good crosses in and, and uh, got 2-0 up. And then second half, I thought, uh, again, we defended well and um, got another couple of goals. But just over, overall solid from everybody. I thought George O'Malley at the back was tremendous. And I thought Wessel did a good job coming for the crosses. And then the good news is Matt Vorwinkle, uh, got two goals, which, uh, you know, he's been closely guarded all the time. And uh, the last goal that he, he provided, the assist for Ryan, I thought it was just a thing of beauty ball up to him, a flick on and a chip goal. So all around, I'm very pleased. And I'm pleased for the guys who came on the last 15, 20 minutes uh, from the bench. I think we got everybody who was available on the field. And they did a good job too. So we just said in the changing room there that was a, a really, really solid performance from every single player. And I'm, I'm proud of them against a tough Lafayette team. You know, Lafayette's got seven wins and they're, they're, they're not an easy team to play and they'll do well in their conference. So um, really pleased overall. All right, we'll open up the questions. Uh, start with you. How are you doing, Coach? Congratulations on the victory. I want to touch on Matthew Vowinkle for a second. He came in only four goals and five assists, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong. And then he comes out and scores two goals in this match. So can you kind of talk to me about what do you think that means for him, especially with him not having maybe as many goals as he would have hoped at this point in the season? Yeah, I think with Matt, you know, everybody knows his abilities. Uh, so I, I think, you know... It, he's marked excessively in the games and that's probably why Ryan's had a little bit more room down the middle a lot of the time because they're really concentrated on Matt. But what, what I'm really happy with Matt was I think his, his play with his back to goal has been a lot better. If you look at some of his touches today to bring our midfielders and our outside midfielders into play and some of his headers have been spectacular really. So... Well, I think he's a much better all-round player now and he's bringing people into play. And because he's getting the excessive uh, attention, it's opening things up for other people. But um, he got in the right spots today. He finished the penalty and he had a couple of other chances and finished another goal. So pleased with his overall performance and he's definitely getting better by the game with his back-to-goal play. All right, uh, Max? Coach, pregame, you and I talked about uh, Vowinkle and Carmichael and what they can do. Yeah. But Tatafu and O'Malley, when you have the two of them in the back and they're both on top of their games as they were, as they both seem to be tonight, how, what does that do for this whole team's confidence knowing just nothing's getting through? Yeah, well, I think a few games ago, five or six games ago, we're having a little bit of a blip with the back line and not, you know, not going it where we were at the right depth or the right height that we wanted it. And we fixed that. They're both warriors, you know, and, and Tata was a young lad, but he came out of a good level, so he, he did understand the game a lot more than most freshmen. Mm. But um, as I said today, George is a fearsome leader. He wins more setters, and, and, and Tata is a great complimentary, uh, complimentary player to be around him. And uh, look, there's still a little bit to learn, and, and it's not a perfect display, but it's definitely a very good one. And... Uh, D defending is a mentality and those two have both got the right mentality they want to defend and uh, they were again very very good uh, my pick of the defence today was uh, George O'Malley and then um, I thought Wessel did a good job uh, coming for crosses so overall very pleased again uh, Andrew Hey coach Andrew Fantuccio Hofstra Chronicle uh, can you talk a little bit about sort of the young the two young phenoms almost you have on your team, and Carmichael and Tatafu. Uh, Carmichael now leading the uh, nation in goals with 13, and Tatafu just collected his third rookie of the week award for the CAA. How do you feel, you know, going forward these next few years with these two sort of spearheading your roster? Yeah, well, hopefully every year you've got some special players. We've had some great players come through this program, but these two are as good as any with promise and, and they've got the right attitude to work hard and maybe Ryan's got to get a little bit um, 
more interested into in the uh, weight room a little bit, you know, and the way and look after uh, its body and how he eats and that. And Tata Fu's come out of a great regime, so I, I think he'll keep on improving. So the future is bright, but you know, ju not those, just those two. I think they've got a, a great group around them who provide the platform for them to perform. So. Well, while we're saying they're, they're doing incredibly well, <clears throat> I think the people around them are doing incredibly well as well. Uh, we'll go to Blake. <clears throat> hey, Coach, it seemed like there were very little offensive opportunities for Lafayette all day. What is it about the team's ball control that kind of stifles all those opportunities for opposing teams? Yeah, f for us, um, Blake, the way they set up with five at the back, you know, it, it gives you a little bit more time in transition to, to put out the fires that they may cause, you know. But they did leave three at times up top and we just dealt with it well with a good line and a good shape and um, good defensive rotation and we rotate to the ball was good. And um, I think it's difficult to play against us because we, we press high a lot of the time and we try and... Um, uh, snuff the, the 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 problem out in its infancy so difficult to play against us and then if you do get round our box i think our one-on-one -on -one defending is very good and uh, again our players move the feet well and uh, hopefully deny uh, more crosses um, but today that long throw is, is as long as i've ever seen one and uh, that was a bit of a problem but we we managed that well on, on uh, four or five occasions so again um happy happy that we dealt with it and, and then when we did gain possession i thought we moved the ball quite well too uh yeah hey coach yeah we got i know you just got out of a hard-fought victory but i want to look ahead to jmu i know you guys are probably not looking at this like any normal game so one what do you think the mentality of your team is heading into the match and two what do you guys think you need to clean up in order to come out of there with what I would argue is the biggest game in the CAA this season so far. Yeah, I mean, historic, if you, historically, if you look at the last few years, it's been us and JMU and possibly UNCW and a couple of others now and again. But, you know, it's no secret they've put us out the last three years on penalties in two finals and one semi final, and they've won it each year. So, but that's the past. The future is based on this year. You know, we, we think we're better than ever and, and we're obviously um, quite dangerous going forward. But we're not fools. We know GMU are very well coached. They've got great pieces and, and they're, they're good in all departments. And uh, it's going to be difficult to uh, get a result against them. They are the three-time reigning champions. But, you know, we, we, we've got to believe in ourselves, believe in our processes and, and believe in our talent. And it, it should be a great game. Hopefully we'll have a nice big crowd there. It's alumni day and um, senior day. So we should have a nice crowd and it should be a good spectacle for the spectators to watch. All right. uh, Andrew, do you have another question? Uh, yes, I do. So uh, Coach Lafayette was without two of their top offensive players today in uh, Kiltram and uh, Benji Grossi. How much of an effect do you believe that had on today's matchup? Yeah, look, look I, I think the sum of our parts and the process of defending, you know, whether they've got the best players or not the best players, it, it's got to be executed in a manner that's conducive to keeping a clean sheet. And we did a good job. And I thought even if we had those players on the positions we we're in on the field, the depth of our bat line, how we fought for the ball, our, our mental uh, fortitude, our, our toughness, I, I would have been, I would have backed us against most players and most teams today. So, yes, there are a couple of good players missing. I do believe they have one eye on the, uh, their conference, which they're doing quite well in. And again, Lafayette, a good team and well coached by Dennis Bourne. I've known Dennis a long time. He's an excellent coach and he does a good job. I just thought we dealt with him very well today and we finished some great chances. So from that point of view, whether they had a starting 11 or a couple down, I thought we did a wonderful job. All right. Any more questions? Okay. Thank you, Coach. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Congratulations again on the win. Thank you very much.